Hello, my name is Alexander Drozdov, and I'm researcher at UCLA. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install PySpeedS in Windows 10. And I will use a slightly different approach that is available on PySpeedS website. I'm going to show you how to run PySpeedS within Windows command line and within PyCharm IDE, which is one of the uh, integrated development environment uh, that's used in Python. After that, I also show how you can execute some of the PySpeedS commands from MATLAB. So, but let's get started. As you can see, I'm using a Windows Sandbox, which essentially is a clean Windows environment. First thing we need to do is to download and install Python. You can do it from the official python.org uh, website. Currently, PySpeedS works with Python up to version 3.8.6. So let's download it. And you can select it according to your operation system, but we're using Windows. During the installation process, I recommend to check this button and add a Python into the path. And I will use default settings. Okay, after a few minutes, um, the installation is complete. And I highly recommend to click this button to disable the path length limit. By default, Windows has limitation on the environmental variables length, and it's limited to 260 characters, and this disable this limit. Now let's open the Windows command line, and I'm doing it by typing cmd here, and open command prompt. Okay, now within command prompts, we can double check that Python is installed by running command python minus capital B. And as you can see, Python shows an installer version 3.8.6. Next step, we're going to create a Python virtual environment. And this is a very useful tool because we're going to install different packages. And if there is something that you want to try and install different packages, you can do so by creating a, a different uh, virtual environment. To do that, we have to call command python minus m vn. And the name of the folder where your virtual environment will be created. Let's call it PySpeedS env. Now you can see that our PySpeedS env folder was created. And now we need to activate virtual environment. To do so, you, you need to execute the script, which is already located inside this folder by the path scripts activate. When the virtual environment is activated, you can see that the name of the virtual environment appears on the left side. To access this virtual environment, you can simply call command deactivate. Within this virtual environment, uh, now we can uh, install different packages. And we're going to install PySpeedS utilizing Python package index. And it's as simple as running command pip install PySpeedS. It should take several minutes to install. You can also use uh, Anaconda to download packages, and, and you can find information about this on PySpeedS GitHub page. After installation is complete, we can double check that PySpeedS within all necessary packages are installed by typing command pip list. And as you can see, this is the all packages that were installed with PySpeedS and their corresponded versions at the moment of recording of this video. I have to note that currently there is several problems with a few packages that you may experience in Windows 10, at least in, in the build 2004. One of them is related to the NumPy package and this version 1.19.4. The problem with this package is due to the uh, some runtime error in the Windows library and, and the temporary workaround is to install the lower version of NumPy. To do that, you need to execute command pip install numpy double equal sign 1.19.3. Also, since we're working from the command line and we would like to plot some of the results, we're going to use graphic user interface that is created by Qt library. In the Python implementation of this library is PyQt5. PySpeed does utilize PyTplot to download and plot the data, which currently supports PyQt up to version 5.12. However, this version doesn't work uh, in Windows. 
uh, because it cannot find the corresponding library. Uh, the workaround of this problem is to install the newest version of PI Qt5. To do that, you need to execute command pipe install pi qt5 minus capital U. If you have several issues, I recommend to address to the PIP documentation. As you can see in this line, uh, current version of PyT plot supports pi qt down to the version of 5.2. 12.0. And as PDAS team, we're going to work on to address this issue in the future. Let's check the list of the installed packages one more time by running command PIP list. And as you can see, our NumPy version is now 1.93 and our PyQt version is updated. Now I would like to execute a few examples from PySpeedas. And those examples you can see on the PySpeedas GitHub page in the description below, right here. So let's start Python within our virtual environment. Import PySpeedas and import tplot from PyTplot. After that, you can load data into the tplot variables within Python by calling PySpeedas.name of the mission, .name of the instrument with the following parameters. And we will run this command right here. The first time downloading may take some time, but if you run this command the second time, the PySpeedas will use already downloaded CDF files. After downloading is complete and the tplot variables are loaded, we can plot them by calling this command. And as you can see, the window appear with the data from Temis. The next step, I would like to uh, install the PySpeedas within PyCharm so we can use the power of uh, IDE. And I start with downloading the PyCharm. The free version or community edition PyCharm is a very powerful tool to develop applications in Python. Let's try the PyCharm installation. And I will choose the default settings along the installation process. After installation is complete, I will run PyCharm right away. Alternatively, you can press start and run it from the start menu. I will select the dark team and skip the plugin installation. So let's create a new project and we call it PySpeedS test. PyCharm also encourages creating a virtual environments, and that's what we're going to do right here. First, if we want to work with PySpeedS, we need to uh, we need to configure our virtual environment. Go to File and Settings, and those settings apply to this particular project. We need to go to this project PySpeedS test, our created project, and select Python interpreter. Press a plus button and search PySpeedS. As you can see, it appears here and we can click install package. After installation is completed, we should resolve several issues that currently existing at the moment of recording of this video. First of all, we will install lower version of NumPy. And you can do that by double clicking on NumPy and select specify version. And we select 1.19.3, install. And with PyQt5 package, we can simply click the arrow button to upgrade it. After that, we can execute a few examples similar to what we did in console. So I open the Python console. And with the console, I will run the same example as I did using the terminal. You may see a few warnings uh, the first time, but those are just synthesis warnings. They should not affect your work uh, and they will not appear the second time you're running import pi speed s. Again, after files were downloaded, we can execute tplot command to plot the data. And the window with the data appears to be similar as we see from the terminal. 
but of course, we sometimes we need to create a scripts and not type all those commands in the terminal manually. And that's where IDE comes handy. So let's create a script, new Python file, and let's call it MMS load and plot. Example. And here we will create a second example from the uh, speed as GitHub page, which loads and plot MMS data. And as you can see, as I type, the suggestions appears, which is very helpful when you're writing a script. After your script is complete, right click on the script and press run MMS load and plot example. Now the script is executed and MMS is asking for the uh, password for public access. We just hit enter and leave it blank. The script downloads MMS data and plots it in a similar way as, for, as with Tamis data. Now I'm gonna switch out from the sandbox mode and show how you can use PySpeedS within MATLAB. To execute PySpeedS, in MATLAB, you have to run MATLAB from the virtual environment where you have PySpeedS installed. Don't forget to activate it before you're calling MATLAB. Now my virtual environment is activated, I can call MATLAB. MATLAB utilizes different interface to access Python. To check this MATLAB sees installed PySpeedS, we can simply call command help Pi speed us. And after a few minutes of initial initialization, you can see that Pi speed us is visible within MATLAB. Now let's try to load and plot OmniWeb data from Pi speed us. To do that, we will, we will call the following command. As you can see, we call omni.data function. Uh, and we pass the Python arguments t range, which is a list that includes one day. After the command has been executed, you can see that we have um, access to several tplot variables. Let's plot CMH index. We will call tplot function from pi tplot package. And as you can see, the window, the QT window appear and we can see the CMH index data on the, on the screen. You can also create your own functions in uh, Python and executed from the MATLAB. I already created one. And this example loads the data and export them into the MATLAB environment. Note that PyTplot get data returns data in the form of NumPy arrays. However, MATLAB doesn't support uh, direct import from NumPy arrays, so we have to convert it to list arrays. And that's what we're doing. We're exporting time and index from CMH and convert them into the uh, regular Python arrays. To call our functions, we address it by py.loadOmni, which is name of our module and load omni data, which is name of our function. You can see the result of this uh, command returns as the rest variable, which is a tuple that contains a time and index. I created the MATLAB script right here that gets this data and converts them into the time and index appropriate for MATLAB. So let's run the script. Now you can see we have our CMH index plotted using the MATLAB plot function and that's utilized the data that was obtained from PySpeedS. And that concludes this video. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out SpeedS team and refer to the PySpeedS GitHub page. Thank you very much.